everyone. Welcome to the CLO User Summit in 2022. We're very happy to have you here. My name is Cécile Wenmakwa, and I am thrilled to present the workshop How to Create a Denim Button from Scratch in CLO to You. I am a 3D designer at CLO Virtual Fashion, and I am based in the European headquarter in Munich, Germany. My background is in fashion design. I studied fashion design, both menswear and women's wear with a focus on pattern making. I have always been interested in new technologies and experimenting with different tools to see how to create and construct garments differently. And this naturally led me to be interested in 3D technologies and then work at Glow Virtual Fashion. So if you have any questions throughout this workshop, feel free to ask them in the chat. We will make sure to give you an answer. Then let's get started and I hope you will enjoy following along. The goal of this workshop is to demonstrate a complete workflow of creating a jean button from scratch in CLO. Let's first have a look at what we are trying to achieve. Here is an example of the jean button that we will create and register in CLO. This idea was inspired by the different questions asked by our users within our community forum regarding exporting a 3D object from CLO, using the UV editor for graphic and print placement, as well as adding custom-made button in CLO. In this workshop, we will then share tips and tricks on modeling a heart object in CLO, see how to use the UV editor mode in CLO to organize and extract the UVs of our object, as well as see how to export a CLO project in a standard 3D file format, and finally, we will see how to register our object as a button in CLO. First, let's start with modeling or seeing how to create the geometry of the button. I will get started with the ellipse tool to create a circle in my 2D window. I will select the tool and then click left once to generate a circle with a specific value. I will select the option circumference and enter the value 125,5 millimeters. And then press OK. We can see the geometry of our circle because it is a very small piece. In order to make the mesh smaller, I will then select my transform pattern tool to make the particle distance lower, so then I have a higher resolution. Now you see that the edge of the circle has moved out. I will then create three additional internal circles which will have different sizes. I will then select my internal ellipse tool located in my 2D toolbar and then place my mouse at the center of the circle. I will then click left once and again create an ellipse or this time an internal ellipse of a specific size. I will go again to my circumference uh, section and this time I will enter the value 106,6 and then press OK. I will repeat this a few times in order to create different rings. So then I will create another one, again selecting the circumference and then changing the value to 56,3. And then the last one, which I will do again, and this time the circumference will be 37,5 or 4. And then press OK. So now I have my different rings. I will then move my circles in the middle of my workspace in the 3D window. I will select them in my 2D window, like this, and then use the gizmo to place them at the center. Once this is done, we can select those internal lines in order to cut them and separate the rings. I will start by selecting the internal line of the center, the one in the middle, and then the last one. I will then click right on one of those internal lines and then select the option Cut and Sew. Now you see that each of those rings became distinct circles. 
I will then reorganize them in my 2D window. Once this is done, we will duplicate the two middle rings in order to create the bottom piece of the button. I will select the two rings and copy paste them by using the shortcut Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I can align them to my original rings by pressing the Shift key and following the Y axis. The good thing about aligning them in the 2D window when pasting them is that those two rings will also be aligned in the 3D window. I will not need to adjust their X and Y position in the 3D window, only the Z position. I will then change the thickness rendering of all of those elements in order to create the thickness of our button. I will get started with the outer ring and change the thickness rendering here to 2. I will then select the other ring on the left and change the thickness rendering to 1. I will move on to the ring located at the bottom on the far right and change the thickness rendering to 3. The top smaller ring here, I will change the thickness rendering onto 2 and same for the smaller um, ring at the bottom. And finally, this circle here, I will change the uh, thickness rendering to 10. As you see, when changing the thickness rendering, the curvature of the geometry remains quite rounded. In order to shave this extra surface off, I will select all of those elements and then go to the property editor to change the curvature value of the curve side geometry, which is set in percentage. I will change this value from 100% to 10%. The elements look now more appropriate for the project we are trying to achieve. I will then move the Z position of some of those rings in order to finalize the design. I will select all of these elements and bring them above the ground. This is important if we want to later on register our object as a button. The distance from the ground to the button represents the distance from the garment to the button. If the gap is too big between the ground and the object, it might not be possible to register it as a button or the button will appear as it is floating and not attached to the garment. Once I am done, I can save this object as the first draft by going into File, Save as, Project, and saving it in a folder dedicated to this project. We will then move on to the second chapter of this workshop and see how to organize the layout of the UVs within the UV Editor mode. Let's now switch from Simulation mode to UV Editor mode. Generating a layout for the UVs will be important for this project, as we will later want to apply a button texture which has specific graphic placement. If, for example, we want to place this button texture on our object and no UVs have been set up, we will end up with this result. It is not possible to add a graphic or change the position of a texture on an OBJ or any other 3D format in Clo using the Edit Texture tool and the Transform Graphic tool. The UV Editor will be then our best bet. We will see later on what are the best OBG export settings to make sure that our object geometry recognizes the UV layout that we will set up. I will go back to my project file and organize the UVs into the UV Editor. I will keep the organization within the 0, 1 square to save a single image, which will then serve as a template to design the button surface texture. I will scale the UVs up and spread them within the square 01 so that I'll optimize the amount of space used. If I go beyond the square 01, I can click right within the empty space and select the option Fit all UV to 01. I can then press OK to complete the action. Once the UVs are organized within the square 01, I can then export an image of the layout organization by clicking on the UV snapshot icon on the top right of the UV editor UI. A pop-up window will appear and allow me to set up the saving path and change the resolution of the image if necessary. In my case, I will keep it to 2048 pixels. I can also change the wire color of the mesh. 
I will change the wire color from white to black so that I can clearly see the UVs and use the layout as a template in another 2D texture editing app to create the button texture surface. Finally, a PNG has been saved in my Gene Button Workshop folder and here is a preview of the image. From that image, I will then design the texture of my button in another 2D texture editing app. In order to save time, I did this step beforehand and here is the result. I generated three images, the texture map, also more broadly known as the color map, the normal map and the roughness map. I am now ready to go to the next step. So then, let's jump to the third chapter of this workshop and see what are the best export options for my object. I decided to export the button as an OBJ. Depending on how and where this button will be used, some other file format might make more sense. But in my case, I know that I will be able to register a button in Clo from an OBJ file. I will then go to File, Export, OBJ. Then I will first define the saving path and the OBJ name, and then a big pop-up window will appear. I will make sure that all patterns are selected. I will then export as a single object with the thickness. For my OBJ to recognize the UV layout that I set up, I will make sure to tick the Unified UV Coordinate option. I will keep the image size to 2048 and keep my scales in millimeter. Finally, I will select the option Save with Absolute Image File Path and then click OK. Then, we can open a new window and import the button OBJ to see if everything is OK. As you see, it kept the position and size of my initial elements, but now it is one single hard object. There is no texture which is normal. We will add the surface texture and the other maps that we generated from the UV layout after registering the button. Let's then directly jump into the following and last chapter. I will be able to register a button in Clo through the button tab of the object browser. I will not go through the 3D window. I can therefore remove this button OBJ from my workspace. In the button tab, I will select the default button and move towards the property editor. I will reach the shape section and click on the little plus sign on the right side of the little button image. A pop-up window will appear and allow me to register the OBJ that I saved as a Clo button. It will then be converted into the BTN file format, which is a Clo native file format. I will first name my button file and then select an image which I can use as a thumbnail. It can be a picture of a real life button or an illustration. In my case, I will select an illustration. For this workshop, I will not set up different button sizes, so I will omit this section underneath the button title. I will jump directly to the OBJ section and load my OBJ file by clicking on the four square icon. I will keep the value of the width, thickness and weight as it is. It will then resize my button accordingly. Later on, it will still be possible to change the width, thickness and weight of the button in the property editor. Once I am done, I can press OK and then the button will be registered. You can see now that the button has been added inside the object browser and it has replaced the default button here. You can also see in the property editor that the button has been added inside the shape library section and now you will be able to use it for other projects as well. But before that, let's add a texture, normal and roughness map and then save this uh, new button to override the initial one so that when you use it for other projects, then the button will be complete with the visual aspect as well. I will then go here to add my texture and select this um, texture that we created beforehand, then click on open. I will do the same as I generated some normal maps and roughness map from this texture and add them. So I select my normal map and then I will change from roughness intensity into map and select the map section and select my map and then click on open. To make sure that everything is all right, I will add it onto a small pattern piece. I will create this pattern piece using the rectangle tool right here 
I will create a rectangle like this. I can make it a little bit bigger as such. And then I will add a button using the button tool. So I select the button tool and I can add a button either on inside the 2D or in the 3D window. So here, and it seems to be okay. So if it is okay, then we can go back into our object browser, into the um, button tab and select our button. I can then go into my property editor all the way up and click on the save button here. And then I can overwrite the button that I initially created so that it also has the textures. So here we go. This is the full workflow of creating a button from scratch in Clo and then registering it in our system. Then to finalize this workshop video, I will show you how the button looks like on a final garment. I will go into File, Open, Project, and I will select this denim jacket final that I created beforehand. And here we go. Here is the final button that has been applied onto a denim jacket. I will zoom in so that you can have a better look. So thank you all for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this workshop and that you were able to learn something new. Feel free to check out other design workshops and presentations throughout the day. I wish you a good summit and see you soon.